In 1973, the U.S. Supreme Court legalized abortion nationwide. The decision is called Roe versus Wade, and those who defend it are known as robots. This is how they think. You people say that abortion should be illegal in all situations. But what happens when the pregnancy threatens the mother's life? Why should she have to die because you don't think she should be allowed to have an abortion? Well, first off, these people would have you believe that every year, the only thing standing between millions of pregnant women and the Grim Reaper is abortion. Personally, I'd like to know when pregnancy became so dangerous. Maybe it happened about the same time that abortion became legal and therefore so profitable. In any event, what these people carefully avoid is the well-established fact that modern medicine has effectively eliminated any circumstance in which continuing a pregnancy will kill the mother. Simply put, there is no pregnancy-related medical condition that is cured by killing the baby. However, if that extraordinarily rare situation were to exist, the guiding principle for dealing with it is intent. To understand this, consider the issue of conjoined or Siamese twins. It is now common for doctors to perform surgery to separate them, and it is accepted that, in some instances, the chances for both surviving is questionable. However, no ethical surgeon would ever agree to intentionally kill one of the twins in order to save the other one. In every case, the doctor's intent would be to save both. It may be that prior to surgery, everyone involved agrees that it is possible, perhaps even likely, that only one will survive, but this surgery would never be performed with that as the intended outcome. This same principle should be applied when pregnancy poses an immediate threat to the physical life of the mother. The medical staff should be directed to do everything possible to save both mother and child. If as an unintended consequence of that effort, either or both fail to survive, that would be an unavoidable, thus permissible outcome. However, it is as morally indefensible to intentionally kill the baby to save the mother as it would be to intentionally kill the mother to save the baby. The point is, the abortion lobby wants the public to think that the pro-life position is that the fetus should have more rights than the woman and that she should be forced to die if it is necessary to save her unborn child. That is a lie. The pro-life position is not that the baby's rights are superior to the mom's, but that they are equal. It is a position that protects the lives of women without caving into the abortion lobby's morally bankrupt and self-serving argument that it is sometimes necessary for women to kill their own children.